speakers on today's call are Mr. Jagan Reddy Nalore, Vice Chairman of Rain Industries Limited, Mr. Gerard Sweeney, President of Rain Carbon Inc., and Mr. T. Srinivasa Rao, Chief Financial Officer of Rain Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. During the conference call, the management will be referencing and discussing a slideshow presentation which is available for viewing on our website at www.rain-industries.com in the Investor Relations section. It is recommended viewing this presentation while listening to the management's discussion. Before we begin, management would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature that could be affected by certain risks and uncertainties. The company's actual results could differ materially from such forward-looking statements. Now, if you could turn to slide three, I would request Mr. Jagan Reddy to provide an update on key developments within the RAIN group. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, operator. Good evening to everyone. I would imagine that, like me, many of you are relieved that 2020 is over and looking forward to getting back to life as it was prior to the coronavirus pandemic. Despite 2020 being a year we all want to forget, it was the safest in the company's history, with 13 of our sites completing the year without a recordable incident. In fact, across our organization, we have operated 252 days without a recordable incident. Other than a few weeks nationwide lockdown in India, no other production facilities globally were shut down due to COVID. We overcame significant damage from the strongest hurricane to hit the Louisiana area in the last 150 years and continue to operate our plant safely with only essential operators on site. We also fully executed our plan to cease operations at our Utah facility and optimize production at our Duisburg site, essentially producing the majority of the same products at one site instead of two. This improved efficiency is one of the reasons we were able to maintain EBTA in a year that had reduced sales volume and many headwinds. Turning to slide four of the presentation, EBTA of Indian rupees 4.8 billion in the fourth quarter was down 7% from Indian rupees 5.17 billion during the previous quarter. This decrease reflects the seasonality of some of our products sold in Europe and North America from our carbon and advanced material segment, which are not in high demand in cold weather. Revenues for the fourth quarter was Indian rupees 26.4 billion compared with Indian rupees 25.66 billion in the third quarter. The sequential improvement in light of reduced earnings occurred primarily due to improved volumes and pricing and appreciation of euro against Indian rupees. This was the second consecutive quarter that we have seen in an increase in revenues, giving us hope that the global economy is returning to normalcy, albeit slowly. On the carbon side of our business, volumes were up about 4% and revenues increased about 7% from the third quarter. This was despite the lingering impact of damage caused by Hurricane Laura on our Lake Charles facility. Although we were able to restart both calcination kilns and electric generation plant, we lost about one month of energy income during the current quarter and were not able to produce CPC to capacity due to bottlenecks and other constraints caused by the widespread damage to the plant resulting in underabsorption costs. Our calcination business was also challenged by a continued worsening of global green petroleum coke supply. As we have seen throughout the pandemic, green petroleum coke prices continue to rise due to reduced refining of transportation fuels, which has negatively impacted refinery run rates and green petroleum coke production. 
on a positive note bullish demand for aluminum and the anodes required for smelting has resulted in higher cpc prices helping to offset the green petroleum cost cost increases providing an optimistic view for the coming quarters during the fourth quarter we began to prepare to suspend calcium inactivity at our problems and illinois facility a range of issues have impacted demand traditionally served from the facility led by access to cost effective raw materials during the current year budgeting process amid raw material shortages it became clear that it would be more economical to suspend operations temporarily until the supply demand situation improves especially from a green petroleum perspective we will service the robinson plant sales volume from our gulf coast calcineers and in the coming months we'll continue to evaluate the market for signs of improvement so we can resume calcination at robinson on the distillation side of our carbon business pitch volumes were lower largely due to the closure of an aluminum smelter and curtailment at an anode producer on the margin side we saw price pressure on traditional coal tar supplies as industries look for alternatives for raw materials typically sourced from oil refineries and add demand pressure in terms of other carbon products creosote volumes were down slightly due to its seasonality while volumes of carbon black oil were up about 9% as we sold inventory that had built up from second quarter finally crude naphthalin volumes grew by about 11% thanks to the increased demand by the construction industry during turning to advanced materials fourth quarter saw lower volumes which resulted in 8% decrease in revenue compared with the third quarter this was primarily due to a seasonal reduction in engineered product sales in particular our sealer based products which falls off in the winter months our petrolers sales volume remains strong which reflects the transition to electric vehicles in many parts of the world and sales of our carburetor specialty binder increase by more than 9% during the quarter as demand from asian countries rebounded as the impact of covid began to subside elsewhere carbon resin sales were flat in the third quarter and sales of our petrol resin increased during fourth quarter petrochemical intermediate volumes were up substantially but pricing changed in line with the benzene quotations Finally sales of naphthalene derivatives during the fourth quarter were stronger due to increased demand for phthalic anhydride PNS products and refined naphthalene by the construction industry Regarding naphthalene derivatives we closed the fourth quarter with the sale of our polymer business which primarily consisted of our production facility in Candia Canada This downstream business fell outside of our core businesses and had always been run as a standalone enterprise with few synergies other than utilizing naphtha oil produced at our distillation facilities in our cement business there was an increase in volumes and revenue by approximately 11% and 2% respectively compared with third quarter the sales volumes have improved across all regions where we operate segment ebda decreased by indian rupees 24 252 million compared to third quarter mainly due to lower reservation with good monsoons in south india the rural economy should provide strong impetus to increase construction activity and thereby cement demand over the next several quarters so this business update i will now turn over the call to jerry sweeney to take you through the industry and other business updates on slide 5 jerry thank you jagan and good evening everyone it's a pleasure to speak with you all again turning to slide 5 Aluminum demand is now higher than pre-pandemic levels and with the LME prices more than 2100 a ton are the highest since late 2018. Also, increased demand is driving pricing as there appears to be a global shortage of scrap and primary aluminum. Amid growing demand and rising prices, an additional 4.7 million tons of smelting capacity, 3 million of which will be in China is expected to come online during 2021 in the form of new plants and restarts of previously idled facilities 
At the same time, the decision by the new U.S. administration to continue aluminum tariffs instituted by the outgoing administration and potentially reinstate others that had been lifted should help to protect U.S. smelters from Chinese imports. These developments bode well for our carbon segment. Increased Chinese aluminum production should result in a decrease of CPC exports out of that country, creating more opportunity for us to serve the rest of the global market. Similarly, there should be less Chinese coal tar pitch exported to places like the Middle East and South Africa, which should be beneficial to us, to us as well. In terms of aluminum pricing, we are now seeing deals in the market for low carbon aluminum. However, in Q4 of 2020, we began seeing companies pay a slight premium for low carbon aluminum. As smelters and anode producers look to capitalize on this emerging sustainability trend, we believe that our engineered anhydrous carbon pellets, or ACP, could be a differentiator in helping aluminum producers reduce their emissions and energy consumption, contributing to the marketability of their low carbon aluminum. Continuing on ACP, let us turn to slide six, our major projects. Construction has resumed at our ACP production facility in the United States and will commence in Q2 2021 in India after being halted due to the risk of COVID exposure amongst, amongst employees and contractors. Beyond its emissions and energy advantages, ACP will give us the unique ability to maximize our GPC feedstock as the rapid global transition to electric vehicles reduces demand for transportation fuels and the, avail and the resulting availability of feedstock for our calciners. In a world where pet coke supplies are becoming increasingly tight, the ability to achieve enhanced green petroleum coke utilization rates when we calcine ACP by reducing the consumption loss during calcination could be a differentiator when it comes to production economics, raw material availability, and sustainability. Construction on our new vertical shaft calciner in India is largely completed, and we could begin production within weeks of receiving a satisfactory ruling on the importation of raw material feedstock for the facility. The ability to import the needed raw materials for the shaft calciner is critical because of the shortage of available domestic GPC. Across India, supplies have become even tighter as cokers are producing less pet coke during the pandemic and competition for domestic GPC versus higher cost imports has intensified. Once commissioned, each of these projects and their carbon extending and emissions reducing technologies will strengthen our position as a leading sustainable global producer of essential carbon-based materials. Finally, an update on our new hydrogenated hydrocarbon resins plant in Germany. After spending much of the second half of the year working with customers on product testing and validation, we reached our first sales milestone for our advanced water white resins in the fourth quarter. The qualification process was understandably impacted by COVID since the pandemic has reduced customers' willingness to conduct testing and introduce new products while working with skeleton crews. Additionally, we continue to work to op optimize operations of this plant. It is a highly sophisticated unit, introducing new technology and capabilities to the industry. Looking forward, we will continue to ramp up production and anticipate continually increasing sales volumes in 2021. Before I turn the call over to Srinivas, I would like to congratulate our employees for completing 2020 with a total recordable injury rate of less than 0.14, making it the third year in a row that we have established a new company best for annual safety performance. In any year, that would be a remarkable achievement, but the fact that we finished 2020 with so few recordable injuries is beyond remarkable when you consider that we achieved this while implementing radically new health and safety practices due to COVID, as well as starting up our new advanced residence facility, dealing with the significant damage from a hurricane and completing one of the most complex maintenance turnarounds that we have ever attempted. With that, 
I'll now turn the call over to Srinivas, who will take you through the consolidated financial performance of RAIN. Srinivas, over to you. Thank you, Jerry, and good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to speak with you today. In the fourth quarter of 2020, RAIN achieved consolidated net revenue of 26.4 billion rupees compared to 28.3 billion rupees in the fourth quarter of 2019, a decrease of 1.9 billion or about 6.7% decrease. This resulted from a decrease in revenue of 2.34 billion or 12.3% decline from our carbon business segment and 0.25 billion or 3.7% decrease from our advanced material business offset by an increase of 0.7 billion or 31.9% increase from our cement business segment. Rain's consolidated adjusted EBITDA increased by 269 million compared to the prior year. This resulted from an increase in the advanced material segment by 367 million and an increase in the cement segment by 389 million offset by decrease in the carbon segment by about 487 million. Now turning to the next slide on carbon segment performance. Revenue from our carbon segment was 16.71 billion rupees for the quarter ended December 31st, 2020 compared to 19.06 billion for the same period last year. During the year, during the quarter, the sales volume decreased by 4.2%, primarily driven by last CPC sales due to Hurricane Lara and reduced demand due to smelter closures. The average blended realization decreased by 8.5%, which was offset to some extent by appreciation of US dollar and euro against the Indian rupee by 3.6% and 11.5% respectively. Overall, due to the aforesaid reasons, revenue from carbon segment decreased by 12.3% during Q4 of CY 2020 as compared to Q4 of CY 2019. Adjusted EBITDA of the carbon segment decreased by 487 million due to decline in volumes, majorly on account of Hurricane Lara. Turning to next slide on the performance of advanced materials. Revenue from our advanced material segment was 6.57 billion rupees for the quarter ended December 31st, 2020 as compared to 6.82 billion for the same quarter in 2019. During the quarter, there was a 7.6% increase in volumes driven by improved demand from Asian markets after recovery from COVID-19 improved demand from construction industries coupled with higher throughput based on improved raw material availability. During fourth quarter of CY 2020, the average blended realization decreased by 10.5%, driven by changes in customer mix and a decline in oil-related prices, which was offset to some extent by appreciation of the euro against Indian rupee by 11.5%. Due to the aforesaid reasons, revenue from the advanced material segment decreased by 3.7% during Q4 CY 2020 as compared to Q4 CY 2019. Adjusted EBITDA for the advanced material segment increased by 367 million rupees due to higher realization in engineered products and volumes in uh, increase in volumes in naphthalene and derivatives compared to Q4 of 2019, coupled with the appreciation of Euro against Indian rupees. Moving on to the next slide on cement business. During the fourth quarter of CY 2020, cement revenue increased by 31.9% compared to Q4 of CY 2019, due to an increase in realizations by 21.2%, along with an increase in volume by 8.8% as compared to last year. Cement EBITDA also increased by 389 million due to an increase in realization coupled with lower costs. Moving to the next slide on debt. We ended the quarter with approximately 1,212 million US dollars of total debt including approximately 77, 77 million US, US dollars of working capital loans 
Net debt was 932 million US dollars and based on LTM EBITDA of 269 million dollars, we ended the quarter with a net debt to EBITDA ratio of 3.5x. We are comfortable at this level as our average borrowing cost stood at 5% and we expect it to remain stable since the floating rate portion of our long term debt is tied to the URI bar which is still negative. Referring to our previous discussions, cash outflow on capital expenditure and plan turnaround, plan turnaround costs for the year ended 2020 total 146 million US dollars, which was more than expected because of because we resumed construction activity during the quarter on our ACP project and incurred expenditure related to Hurricane Lara. Regarding liquidity, we ended the quarter with uh, $280 million of cash on hand and $130 million of undrawn revolver credit facilities. The cash balance increased significantly due to proceeds from the sale of our polymers business. While this, posi this position is very comfortably, we do not intend to maintain this position. Given that the transaction closed on 31st of December, we are still in the process of evaluating all options available to us to deploy the proceeds efficiently. The primary goal is to reduce debt and reduce interest expense for the group. With that, I will now turn the call over to the operator for Q&A session. Operator. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and 1. The first question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equilus Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir, and congratulations for the numbers. So, sir, if uh, we were to normalize for the Hurricane Laura, uh, uh, but what kind of volume growth uh, we would have seen in the carbon segment? Okay. On account of Hurricane Laya, we lost uh, uh, about 34,000 tons of uh, CPC volume. Yeah, that was the impact. Okay. And uh, uh, so the exit run rate that you mentioned about the CPC business, uh, is it showing traction back to or higher than pre-COVID levels in September quarter as well? Yes. Okay. So, second thing, we essentially sold the business to repay debt is what we mentioned in our press release as well. But, but as we can see in the in the presentation today, our net debt has also gone up and our net cash has also gone up. I mean, on net debt level, it looks okay, uh, but we are still not repaying debt. Uh, when does that start happening? Uh, as you, as I, we just explained to you, the sale ha happened on December 31st. So obviously, any reduction of the debt will not appear in the December 31st balance sheet. And second thing is, you are able to see that there is an increase in the debt uh, because the exchange rate, uh, we have about 390 million euros of debt uh, in Europe. Uh, and we are presenting the number in US dollars and the effects rate between USD and uh, Euro has uh, Euro has appreciated substantially against uh, US dollar. Uh, uh, last year it was done at 1.12 and December 31st, 2020 it is 1.23. So a uh, $437 million uh, of Euro debt has got increased to $479 million. It's about $42 million increase is there only because of exchange rates. Okay. And and in terms of uh, cash flows for this year, uh, is it fair to assume that uh, now that we don't have any major capex and normalization of margins is happening, 
all the cash flows will be utilized to reduce debt this year and onwards as well we can't say all cash but uh, we our idea is to reduce the debt sir, in the due course sir. at an appro appropriate time we will be using the cash to reduce the debt sir. but your understanding is correct that uh, we want to reduce the debt and uh, we would use all the surplus cash because we don't have major capex anymore thank you thank you before we take the next question uh, we request participants that in order that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference to please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we request you to rejoin the queue we take the next question from the line of Arvind Kothari from Nivesh I. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, my question was on the uh, upcycle that you know metals are experiencing. If you look at aluminium prices uh, in China, also they are uh, uh, going up substantially. So, in, in that kind of a scenario, I wanted to understand that we are suspending one of our facility of Robinsons, and we had already suspended Hensi Calciner, you know, a year back maybe. So, how are we preparing ourselves for the uh, uh, UK upside in the requirement of CPC given um, uh, what the prices today are basically maybe you know, reflecting higher demand going forward? Um, essentially, you heard from our comments, we do have spare capacity from the calcination perspective. So, um, we have one plant that we've taken down. Um, mainly due to both market demand and raw material availability. As, um, as the demand strengthens, while we have very strong pricing um, in aluminum right now, um, we, we need more demand ultimately. Um, so as that comes back, we will return to Cal signing at Robinson. Um, and if we get um, a favorable ruling in the high courts in India, um, we can also start up our shaft calciner. So we're well positioned um, to feed continued demand growth from the aluminum sector going forward. So on both, if you can give a more color that uh, how much time would it be, you know, uh, there that you, once you decide to start the opening facility, how much time does it take to restart the calciner? And also on the judgment uh, of the Supreme Court, uh, what is the current, you know, uh, you can say position of the company in terms of uh, when it expects or what is the judgment status right now, uh, if you could elaborate? See, just to give you an idea. Uh, okay. Please go ahead, Yeah, no, as, as far as starting up a, uh, a cal signer, it's, it's a matter of weeks. So it's not a... Um, it's not a very protracted process in order to uh, bring a facility up. So that, that will not be a gating issue for us as far as uh, meeting demand. As far as um, you know, an anticipated rulings of uh, High Court in India, Jagan, why don't you uh, go ahead and make comments about that? Yeah, actually, we have approached the government, as a matter of fact, uh, seeking uh, some permission for some job work. And uh, we are actually hoping that we should get a response in, uh, in the next uh, two to three or four weeks, actually. If we get a favorable response, that's fine. Otherwise, then we'll actually approach uh, the Honorable Supreme Court uh, because um, this is one of the very few plants in the world that actually reduces pollution in India and not increases pollution in India. So we think we can approach uh, with the proper justification. And hopefully, you know, we are hoping that we should get some, uh, you know, better, uh, you know, favorable response in a probably hopefully in the next uh, two months, two to three months maybe. And uh, once we have that, we can start the plant. Uh, and it, as Jerry mentioned, you know, it may take about, uh, to start a, a Rotary in Cal Center, say Robinson, it may take about three to four weeks. And to start a, a shaft Cal Center, it will take about six to eight weeks. Okay. 
great and another question was on uh, if you could give a bit of understanding on you know what what the current dynamics are with related to metals it looks like the you know uh, the the metal companies are making you know uh, greater margins uh, we being a converter uh, on the dynamics of both our distillation and calcining business on the distillation side what i understand is that the steel up cycle you know makes uh, the availability of coal tar uh, more easier for us and that reduces our cost in that business and basically the aluminum up cycle gives us the opportunity to price our products of which higher because in that segment at least uh, there are very few plants now which are working around the world except china so in that business uh, if that could increase our margins going forward uh, the converter margins and on the uh, calcining side uh, how are the dynamics given both gpc and ctc are in a rising uh, maybe environment maybe a dollar uh, margin might be going up but the percentage uh, might remain the same is that correct yeah the the um as far as um uh, you know the distillation margins be it uh coal tar pitch um or the uh related uh derivatives that we get off of uh the related products that we get off of um the coal tar that we distill um it, it, look it, it, dealing with uh, i want to be very careful in a you know in in a world where um we have not seen full recovery from covid yet in projecting too much but your basic philosophy that you've uh, expressed um would be correct so if we deal with the scenario of um an improving commodity price um for the sake of aluminum and um and oil price um those are favorable conditions for us from a margin um perspective going forward but we always have to balance um you know supply and demand the the how the steel industry goes um and uh and demand for steel products affects our raw material supply as well so we're always playing um that spread between our our cost for raw material and our um finished sales price but the the momentum that's building up in a world where um vaccines are being rolled out worldwide and we're seeing industries return to um from a pricing and from a uh, volume demand perspective to pre-covid type conditions is absolutely bullish and we are cautiously optimistic about what that can do for us in 2021 Thank you. The next question is from the line of HR Gala from Finvest Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> congratulations to the team for uh, really good operational results. Although you know uh, the selling prices and costs are not in our hands. Uh, my question is, looking from the medium term perspective, how do you see next four to five years shifting for us? That is my first question for uh, three businesses. and what will be our capital investment plans matching with that objective well we've we have spent over the last several years we have uh, essentially made the investments to carry the company for the next 4 or 5 years so your your question is very timely um while we are still getting the investments over the last several years up and running um we really will be we anticipate ramping those investments up over the next uh 2 years um and uh essentially getting them fully operational and producing at full rate which will give us the capacity to carry the company uh over the next 4 to 5 years um and we're also focused on doing this in the most um environmentally friendly and sustainable um format because that's really the marketplace that we're facing now as a company is um we're not just extending um as you heard um um jogging say earlier we're we're not just um essentially adding capacities in new projects but we're doing it um with a with an extreme attention to environmental responsibility and that'll be our focus on the next 5 4 to 5 years as a company is 
really taking um, taking advantage of uh, the opportunity in front of us to to produce um, you know clean, green, environmentally friendly uh, products for the 21st century. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Hello. Yeah, yeah. My second question will be. Uh, you know, what kind of capital expenditure we will be requiring every year to sustain the type of growth which we are expecting? About, see, our normal capex is going to be over 65 to 70 million dollars. And uh, our capital expenditure may be, you know, uh, basically maybe for this, all this we are talking about maybe 10 to 15 million dollars on an average. Because we are not planning to make any big investments, so it is for the next four, three to five years. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Poti from Marshmallow Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on exceptional safety performance in such difficult times. So my first question is on CTP business. Uh, I mean, we've seen the volumes come down steadily. I was just curious to know uh, how do you see that going forward and if you think the graphite electrode uh, uh, re rebound uh, that is happening right now can help us going forward? Yes, actually, as a matter of fact, we expect strong demand for all our CDAM products going forward. And as a matter of fact, we are seeing that actually, uh, be it our advanced materials or in the altar uh, and uh, derivatives, uh, we are actually seeing very strong demand for all our products. So we only expect, and the prices. Uh, and China also having the substantial that will have a good bearing on the rest of the world also. So we do expect strong demand going forward. At least in the future, what we can see. Understood. So that, that was helpful. Uh, so next question is on uh, uh, the uh, strategic non-recurring expense that of 55 crore that we have. I mean, over the last few quarters, uh, this particular line item is quite, I mean, it's, it's been actually quite recurring. So. Uh, what is this about and, and when can we see this particular line item uh, not affecting us anymore? This is basically the expenditure incurred for the new expansion projects. Uh, while uh, oh, oh, the cost incurred for creating an asset uh, will be capitalized, uh, but if any other expenses like uh, uh, operating staff recruited to run the plant or the training of such expenses, uh, those things are, uh, are will not be capitalized and it will be taken to the uh, regular expenses like operating expenses. So we are adjusting them. Once these uh, CapEx projects are completed, it can be more. And one more thing is uh, the hurricane expenses, you know, basically, because until such time we get uh, the insurance, uh, we cannot account for it. So we are actually, you know, basically, you know, expensing all the insurance all the damage that was caused due to the hurricane. And once we get uh, the insurance, then basically we will uh, actually add back to the uh, uh, you know, overall revenue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratiksha Daftari from Equitas Investment Consultants. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is on the CPC prices. I think for last few quarters we were seeing a declining trend and then you know a couple of quarters it remained flat. We are now seeing an upward trend and the, you know, the presentation says that the realizations have reached $385. I just wanted to understand that what kind of trajectory do we expect uh, given the you know the demand situation we have right now. And also, uh, you know, what kind of spreads uh, do we see given that raw material prices are also increasing? Yeah, the, um, on, on GPC, you're correct. The, the GPC price trend um, had been down. Uh, that was more reflective of, of demand. But as we've seen um, essentially less raw material available, that trend has reversed itself. And that's bolstered a um, that's bolstered essentially the price uh, recovery that you've seen in the marketplace. Um, that's going to continue as long as you know global refiners are in their um, reduced um, uh, run rate um, due to COVID. Um, that's mainly due to you know the, the global lack of demand for transportation fuels. 
um, due to the interruption that's taken place. So um, most of that um, price increase that you're seeing is related to, um, again, the, the shortage of raw materials and rising prices for raw materials driving the finished product price. And the second part of your question I didn't get, if you can repeat it, please. I was talking about the price increase in price that we are seeing in CPC and the spreads. Uh, what kind of spreads do we see between GPC and CPC going ahead? Do we see the spreads expanding? Yeah, it, yeah the, the, the spread right now has basically been maintained. Um, so that's, that's indicative of our cost moving with, our, um, with the revenue. Side. And that's really projected uh, throughout this year. With the 4.7 million tons of additional demand coming on globally, that could, the, the expansion uh, potential there for margin is there um, in, the, in the remainder of this year as that new capacity comes online, uh, aluminum capacity, um, because the demand can be driven. But it will be the demand side that would allow us to expand our margin going forward. But I do see that as a better propensity than uh, any squeeze on our margin um, through this year. Okay. And my uh, next question is about the Robinson plant. What kind of volumes have been uh, have we been doing from that plant uh, in uh, last few quarters? Yeah, we've we've roughly been doing about uh, over the last several years about 150 thousand tons a year from the Robinson plant. We have not been producing at full uh, capacity, um, but that's roughly the volume that's been taken off. Thank you. The next question is from Vikram Sharma from Meraki Wealth Management. <laughs> Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hi. Sir, we are facing many problems in ongoing capex. What total amount of cost increase in our ongoing capex due to delay in project? And also, sir, many things are on track now. Then what problem we are facing related to limited construction workforce availability? See, basically, I would say that uh, we are actually experiencing project cost increases of over 10 to 15 percent uh, because of the delay. Uh, workforce maintenance because of COVID, you know, basically, say in India, the workforce has come down. You know, Pre-COVID, now the workforce is about 60 percent than what was needed. But we took a little extra time, but we did complete the plant. Now there are there are final stages of completion. Similarly, in HSTR plant is more or less complete, and actually we are starting construction. Uh, we actually uh, uh, the production has commenced. And now that we don't have any major investments, uh, this should not impact us anymore. Okay, and sir, another in HSTR we have mentioned about in our investor presentation, operation team continuing to manage issue. So, what is issue exactly? We basically, you know, we have we are trying to see. Normally, most of the HSCR projects use a particular raw material, but we are actually trying to use materials that we have. And so we are actually having a little more issues trying to use these new types of raw materials. And it's taking a little longer to stabilize. But uh, the advantage of using this will be we will be able to reduce the raw material costs uh, substantially. So hopefully, but I think we are on the right trajectory. We are actually able to, uh, we are actually slowly getting there, and our products are actually being. Uh, uh, approved by a few of the customers. We are actually getting the required qualities. So, but to stabilize the plant, and especially a HSCR plant is a very, very complicated plant. One of the most recently built plant, uh, very few of the recently built plants. So it's taking a little extra time, but uh, I am very sure that our team will be able to get there soon. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gunjan Kabra. Who's an individual investor? Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask in the conference call of Alcoa, they guided that the project CPP tried to increase in the first half of 2021. And also in the corporate phone call, they highlighted that the availability of coal tar next year will increase in the US and they will not have to import from Europe and the other countries, thereby reducing their costs. So, where do we see the prices and the availability? 
cost of coal tar going forward for rain industries so can we expect a better margin in this division going forward gunjan are you referring to availability of coal tar in north america what is it you are referring <laughs> मार्जिन basically gunjan both in the uh, cpc business and ctd business uh, mm-hmm. the pattern of changes between raw material and finished products will be the same if continuously the raw material prices are increasing in line with the prices of raw materials even the finished product prices will be increasing mr jerry also explained in the beginning that uh, there is uh, so much of uh, aluminum production is taking place in china and uh, rest of the world there is more demand for the product and the china exports are also declining that is uh, definitely will in, uh, result in increase in the prices of for both cpc and ctp yeah to, to add to what shrinivas just said um the the uh, you know earlier i was talking about the supply demand economics on calcination so you're asking more from the distillation side um we well while the steel industry is um is essentially still depressed due to covid and demand factors um we're comfortable with the opportunity that we have this year um from the distillation side um we we don't see the gating issue uh as much from demand because of um the the um lesser amount of players from the distillation side that are in the the coal tar pitch markets so overall we do see um we are uh, cautiously optimistic about the opportunity that 2021 and continually increasing demand will provide for the distillation business thank you the next question is from the line of saket kapoor from kapoor and company please go ahead yeah dhanyawad sir for the opportunity sir firstly if you could give the uh, average utilization level sir how have they planned out uh, over the last 6 uh, months and uh, what was the average for the entire last year for december 19 across the verticals i would say that in you know, a both uh, 2019 and uh, except barring india you know where we had shut down the plants for about uh, five, four to five weeks i think both i think it is flat actually the capacity utilization then 2019 uh, and 2020 uh, but uh, just to give you an idea carbon sector is at about 80% capacity and advanced materials uh, last year has a 60% capacity utilization but you will see improvement in 2021 because advanced material because we have only one plant now and basically the demand is actually picked up quite a bit so you will uh, see a much higher capacity utilization uh, closer to uh, you know almost 90% plus and carbon also with whatever except the uh, plants that are not operating due to various reasons be the robinson and uh, the india scz plant we expect uh, the average capacity to be about 90% this year uh, but the, but with the sale of the units sir uh, how much will they uh, the, they will be declining the revenue you, the existing one will be ramping up from 60 to 90 so uh, what will be the decline in the revenue in, in absolute terms sir the revenue you know that was contributing about 80 million dollars of uh, revenue right sir so we also see this depreciation part also being uh, being higher so uh, uh, what is our current capital work in progress sir and uh, uh, what are the new projects that are that are planned to be capitalized in in the near future actually in uh, in 2020 the depreciation is higher for two reasons reason one is uh, we have capitalized hcr plant in uh, 
uh, June 2020 quarter. And so we started uh, providing depreciation on that. Uh, though the trial productions are going on and uh, revenues are not generated, we are depreciating because the plant is ready and uh, construction is completed. Apart from that, we also have implemented the new lease standard where uh, uh, assets taken on operational lease also is expected to be capitalized. That has resulted in about, uh, on a quarter, about 3 million, 3 to 3.5 million dollars of uh, additional depreciation is getting provided. But it, that is only reclassification of operating expenses, lease rentals into partly as depreciation and partly as interest. And uh, the three projects under construction are uh, like the ACP projects in India and US. Once they are completed, we will be capitalizing. And the vertical shaft plant also will be the uh, what we are constructing in SCZ in, in Vishakhapatnam, India. That also gets capitalized uh, once the con construction is completed, uh, mid of 2021. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tirath Machala from Elusive India Advisory. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I wanted to know that, you know, about a year ago when we broke out the advanced materials segment, um, there, was a, uh, there was a focused uh, thrust on catering to battery technologies or energy storage technologies, and there were a few senior recruitments that we had done. So my question is that, uh, are you seeing um, increased demand from those industries, be it lithium ion or any other kind of energy storage industries? Quite a bit. As a matter of fact, we are actually seeing quite a bit of demand from uh, the battery industry. But to an extent, we are, we, we are not able to service that, uh, that much quantity, and we are actually trying to figure out, you know, can we do a small capex or something like that so that we can actually get there to be able to meet this demand? Yes, you know, basically whatever we said last year, uh, uh, the increased demand, we are seeing that. And uh, it is actually growing quite a bit. So, uh, and our team actually is doing a good job actually trying to make the products required. Uh, so, so any kind of expansion in that uh, segment would it be R&D related or uh, would, would we need to acquire some expertise or how would it work? Or is it not a, a material uh, contributor to our company even going forward? No, actually it will be our own proprietary technologies. We don't need to acquire it from anywhere outside. It will be based on our own R&D. And it is actually a product that we do make, uh, but the, the demand is for much larger uh, quantities. So. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavesh Patel from Patel Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, congratulations on uh, relatively good numbers uh, with a COVID backdrop and also thinking strategic for years ahead. My, my question is, when do we expect our Germany plant, who, which produces the water-wide raisins, to get close to 100% uh, utilization. And I know this is forward looking, but just to get an idea because we have signed up and seen some success with initial customers. And, and also important because this is our highest margin product uh, comparatively. See, basically, you know, we hope to be able to, the plant should reach the capability to produce at a higher capacity probably in the next uh, two to three quarters. But we also have to, you know, our product has to be tested by various customers and you know, it has to be accepted. So the target speed may be a little bit higher. So this year, you know, for 2021, we are targeting a capacity reduction of about 70%. Uh, and uh, probably in an increased ramp up uh, in the next uh, one year or so thereafter. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, that sounds pretty good and... Uh... The, the next question is, uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, next four to five years, uh, and again, you have uh, listed out your uh, priority to reduce debt. Do we, do we consider this to, uh, for us to be able to achieve close to, let's say, even uh, 15 to 20 percent of the current uh, debt that we have on the books uh, that sets up for a very, very strong future ahead? 
uh, with much lesser drag on uh, from the debt that we have, which is close to a billion dollars. See, actually, if you look at our debt, we have a billion dollars, but our net debt now, I think, in you know, in our December 20, it's only about 800 million dollars plus. So our target is to reduce in the next few years. Because as we said, you know, we don't have any major capex. Uh, like Jerry was mentioning earlier, the last several years, almost, I would say, almost uh, seven, eight years, you know, we've been continuously investing on capex. And uh, we want to bring down that. And uh, so we should have uh, improved cash flow, both from uh, our normal cash flow, as well as this new projects that are actually going to, you know, basically also should throw up some cash. So based on that, we do expect to you know, reduce our debt. And uh, I cannot comment on how much exactly we can pay, but uh, we do expect that uh, it should come down. Our target debt to EBITDA ratio should be to be well below 2.5 is our target to be as soon as possible. And uh, and our, also we want to bring down our average interest rate to about uh, 4%, which we are hopeful that we can do it uh, in the next one and a half years. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akilesh Kumar, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Uh, just in the call, uh, I have heard uh, Jagan and Sweeney mentioning that uh, our vertical shaft plant is complete and we are just waiting for the government permission for importing the GPC. So if I take on that, uh, your uh, estimate of, say, one, two months to get the government permission and then an additional one, two months for plan to restart. Effectively, we are hoping for not before Q3 to start, right? Q3 may be a possibility. Okay, and that also only if we don't end up going to Supreme Court, right? See, this time, you know, we have asked for uh, permission from the government and, you know, without them getting the government permission, you know, we should not be questioning, uh, okay. you know, basically going and saying that we'll operate the Supreme Court. We are hoping that government should will take a favorable uh, decision soon. Yeah. And I have uh, one more thing, just wanted to check on that. Like, our Indian smelters, are they not still uh, facing any issue? constraint because of these import quotas of uh, CPC or like say they are not uh, approaching government or Supreme Court? No, they are actually, we, we actually, our thought process and in case uh, uh, next time we want to request the Hollywood service also join in if you have to operate the Honorable Supreme Court uh, because, uh, you know, it's impacting all of us, you know, especially now with how you have maybe read from the uh, various press statements that NALCO is talking about increasing capacity, Vedanta is expanding. So if everyone needs material and India is talking about Atmanirbhar Bharat, if you want to maintain all of this, you know, India production has to increase. And one good thing, you know, as we said earlier, you know, this uh, process actually reduces pollution in India and doesn't increase. With all these benefits, we see the government actually taking a favorable decision. So. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Jagan Reddy for closing comments. Thank you. Two months into the first quarter, there is ample reason to be cautiously optimistic about 2021. With the recent introduction of COVID vaccine around the world and a steady decline in the number of positive cases, demand for many of our products is nearing a return to pre-pandemic levels. The surge in aluminum demand and LMA prices is also very positive and a sign that we could be entering into a commodity super cycle with a multi-year growth trajectory. In the months ahead, top priorities will be to further ramp up sales and production of our advanced resin and to commission the shaft cal panel and ACP production facilities. Beyond that, we know that we must continue to aggressively manage costs including a reduction in capex spending as our major projects are completed. At the same time, generating new and reliable cash flows will allow, will allow us to reduce the company's debt profile. 
finally we must continue our metamorphosis into a 21st century company that transforms industrial byproducts into essential materials for lighter cleaner and faster products and applications that have the dual benefit of creating new market opportunities for our company and driving long term value in a society where sustainability is quickly becoming a license to do business our ability to maxim- maximize the productivity of carbon by upcycling these byproducts makes rain an indispensable player in an increasingly sustainable society thank you all for joining us today best wishes in the months ahead stay healthy and safe and we'll speak with you again in the next quarter thank you very much thank you very much on